In my previous video, I explained what tone mapping is and how it's applied in Blender. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to recreate the tone mapping that you have in Blender, in Photoshop, and in DaVinci Resolve. If you're an Affinity Photo user, Affinity themselves have created a really good video on open color IO settings in Affinity, and I recommend that you watch that instead. The link is in the description. But if you're a Photoshop or DaVinci Resolve user, stay tuned. So if you watched my previous video, you'll already know that in the render settings in Blender, if you scroll down to the color management, there is a view transform where you can apply your tone mapping. So by default, it's set to AGX, but there's other options such as Filmic, which was the previous default. And as you can see, it looks very, very different when you have a bright and saturated scene such as this one. And in fact, this is exactly why AGX is now the new default because the results are a little bit more subtle and more natural looking with far less saturation in the bright highlights. And if you export your renders in a low dynamic range format, such as 16-bit TIFF or PNG or JPEG, this tone mapping is simply going to be baked into your renders. And when you open them in your post-processing application, they are going to look exactly the same as they do in Blender. But if you export in a high dynamic range format, such as OpenEXR, that is not going to be the case. And that's because it just doesn't make sense to apply tone mapping to a high dynamic range image. So instead, what Blender is going to do is it's going to export it as a linear render and it's going to look like this. And the format that Blender uses to export high dynamic range imagery is Rec 709. So if you open your EXR file in Photoshop, it's going to look like this. And until recently, this was a real problem because there was no native open color IO support in Photoshop. So you had to use third party plugins if you wanted to recreate the tone mapping that you had in Blender within Photoshop. Fortunately, as of Photoshop 24, open color IO is now supported. So you can now recreate the tone mapping that you have in Blender within Photoshop. The first thing you'll need to do is to locate your Blender color management file. And on a PC, that is located in Program Files, Blender Foundation. Locate your current Blender version. Go to 4.5 in this case, Data File, Color Management. And here you'll find a file named config.ocio. Select this file path, copy it to the clipboard, return to Photoshop, go to Edit, Open Color IO Settings. And in this dialog, go to the Default Configuration. Make sure to check this option to allow the override. And what you do is select a new custom configuration, paste your file path into there, select the config.ocio file from Blender and load that into your Photoshop preferences and click OK. And what you can then do is go to File, Open as Open Color IO. Locate your Open EXR file, load it into Photoshop. This dialog is going to appear. You need to set your working space to linear rec 709, and that will match Blender's native linear space. Set the depth to same as original and leave the input settings as linear rec 709 and click OK. And that is going to load your OpenEXR file as a smart object. From here, if you go to Window, Open Color IO, that's going to open this Open Color IO panel. And you'll notice that we have a view setting, which by default is set to standard and that matches the standard view within Blender. But if in Blender I change the view transform to AGX and then return to Photoshop, you'll see that I can also set that to AGX and now it's going to match Blender perfectly. One thing to note is that if you're working on a PC, you should leave the display setting to sRGB, but if you're working on a Mac, you should set it to display P3. Now you might have noticed that in this panel, we don't have the looks that are available in Blender, but those are really easy to recreate with exposure and gamma controls. So if I switch back to Blender and just set the look to say punchy and then return to Photoshop, I could use these sliders to try and recreate that look. However, I don't recommend that because that won't be exported when you then convert that file to a lower bit depth. So instead what you should do is just to create an exposure adjustment layer and then I'm just going to manually reduce the gamma to 0.8. And if I compare that to Punchy and Blender, you can see that we've got a pretty close match. I just reset this panel because the next thing I'm going to show you is how to export this document at a lower bit depth. And the way you do that is go to Edit, Duplicate to Profile, making sure that the settings on the left hand side match the ones that you have in your Open Color IO panel. 
And in your target settings, you simply need to select your normal working space, which in my case is sRGB, leave the depth at 32 bit and click OK. And that is going to convert it to a standard ICC profiled Photoshop document, which matches your open color IO document perfectly. And you can then go to image mode, either 8 bits or 16 bits per channel, making sure to set the method to exposure and gamma, click OK. And now you have an 8 bit render that matches your Blender output perfectly. With that done, let's take a look at DaVinci Resolve. So I've created a new project and imported my EXR. I'm just going to drag it onto the timeline and let's just stretch it out. And in order to apply the open color IO settings here, I'm going to need to go into Fusion. I'm going to right click in the workspace, go to Add Tool, Color, OCIO Color Space. Let's connect that up. Once again, I need to go to my color management folder in Blender, copy the path, come back into Fusion, and where it says OCIO config file, click on Browse. Let's just paste that file in and select the Blender config. With that node still selected, you need to set your source space to linear rec 709 to match Blender's linear internal working space and set the output space to AGX. So you'll need to scroll down to find that. And the one you want is AGX base sRGB. And as soon as I do that, you can see that our viewer node matches what we had in Blender. And a nice touch is that in Fusion, you also have access to the same looks that you had in Blender. I'll just reset that back to none and return to the timeline in Resolve. And if we compare this with the output in Blender, you can see that it's identical. And that concludes this video. I hope that you found it useful and thank you very much for watching.